In this video, we're going to make a nice shield force field effect using Shader Ground. This is a great effect to indicate that a certain area is protected to either block the player or block projectiles. You can see it used in action in the FPS game I made recently. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so the effect we're trying to make here is the one in the FPS game I made in just 5 days. If you haven't seen it yet, then go check out that video and play the game. It's very quick and playable fully in your browser. So here I wanted to make something that looked like a shield force field effect that the enemies could shoot through but not the player. So this is the effect that I came up with. We have a sphere mesh with a material applied, the texture is showing some hexagons animated moving upwards, the effect has some nice HDR colors with a nice bloom effect, and you can see a line with extra bloom constantly scanning over our shield. So we can walk around the shield and even go inside it and the whole thing looks great. Again go play that micro game to see the effect in action. So first we're going to make the shader work with a 3D mesh and then we're also going to apply it to a 2D sprite. That way we can use it in either 2D or 3D games. Alright so this is our goal, let's get to it! So here we are in a basic scene. I just have a floor and a simple character controller. Everything is set for 3D since we're going to start off with a 3D shader. Now over here in the project files I have the various textures we're going to need. There's the base hexagon texture. Then we have a emission texture to make sure our hexagons glow. And finally we have a simple gradient texture that we're going to animate. So let's start off by creating a new shader, make it a PBR graph. Call this our shield PBR. Okay, here we are in our shader graph, and here we have our PBR master node. Now the first thing we need is obviously our texture, so we make a new property of texture 2D, call it our main text, and set the reference to underscore main text. This has to be this exact name for the primary texture. Now let's select the default, so we have our hexagons as our default. Now let's drag the texture onto our board, and now we need to sample it, so create a new sample texture node drag the texture on there and the output into our albedo. And just like that you can see it applied into our sphere preview. Okay, so far so good, now let's test this out. So back in the editor, let's make a new sphere, so a 3D object, just a sphere. Alright, there it is, we have our nice sphere. Now let's create a brand new material. Call it our shield and let's set our shader inside the shader graph shield PBR. And just like that it already has the main texture default texture. So now we just apply it into our sphere just like that. And just like that we have our sphere with our basic texture added into our world. Alright. Now one of the issues that you can already see is with the lack of transparency so let's solve that. So that's very simple. All we need to do is go into the PBR master node, click on the gear icon in there. And then here we have our surface and switch from opaque into transparent. And in our case, for the shield, we also want it to be two-sided, so click that one as well. Alright, that should do it. Let's test. And yep, there it is, there's the texture applied, and now we can go inside, and there you go, we can view it from the inside. So our texture correctly has two sides, and it's also transparent, you can see it in the hole there. Alright, so far so good. Now obviously another huge issue is the size of the texture. So back in the shader graph, Let's resize our texture by going in here and we add a tiling and offset node. We pass this into the UV input and now in here we can modify the tiling. So for example, let's put it 10, 10 and this should make the texture repeat itself but as you can see it's not doing that. The reason is on the texture import option so let's go there. Here on the texture import options we have our texture and we need to go into wrap mode and switch it from clamp into repeat. As soon as we hit apply there you go there's our texture now repeating itself. So let's make sure we apply this to all of our textures, so all of these two also make them repeat, okay. Now back in the shader graph you can already see our effect correctly working. So instead of 10 let's put it 5, 5 and we can play around with these values. Now in order to not have these values hard coded in the shader itself, let's make a nice property. So we create a new vector 2, call this the main text tiling. Here let's default it to 5, 5 and we can simply drag it into our scene and into the input for our tiling. Okay, so just like that. Now let's look at it in-game. Here's the texture and as you can see it is now much smaller and we can still play around with the values. 
Over here in the inspector, we can simply modify the main text sound. Let's put it at 1010. And just like this, it starts to look more like a shield. Okay, so far so good. Now back in the shader graph, let's just apply our alpha channel. So we just connect the alpha directly in there. Let's see. And yep, there's our shield now looking more and more like a shield. Okay, so far so good. Now let's deal with our emission. So for that, let's add our texture. So we create a new texture 2D, call this our emission text. Okay, there's the emission, just drag it in there and sample it like we did with the other one. Then let's apply the exact same tiling. So use that one and yep, just like that. And now we take this and drag it straight onto the emission field. Okay, so just like this, let's test. And just like that, we have our shield with a nice emission texture applied onto it. All right, so far so good. Now let's see how we can animate our shield. So the way we're going to do it is by using this same tiling and offset node. We're essentially going to increase the offset over time and that's how we move our texture. We want to increase it over time. So for that, we create a time node and we want to use this time value in here. However, this is a float, whereas this requires a vector too. So we need to make a combine node. And now here it's a bit confusing since the combine node shows labels for colors, but it works the same for vectors. So here the R equals the X and the G equals the Y. So we pass in the time onto the G since so we want to move it on the Y and we pass in the RG, which is the X, Y and put it on the offset. And there you go, just like that, the texture is already nicely animated. However, we have two issues. First of all, it's moving too fast. And secondly, it's going down instead of up. So let's solve the direction, which is very simple. In here, before we create our vector, we just add a negate node and we negate our time value and pass it in there. And there you go. Now the texture is moving up. Okay. And now for the speed, let's go up here to make a new vector one, call it our shield speed. And let's default it to 0.5. Now we can drag it onto our board and all we really need is to have a multiply node where we multiply the speed by the time before negating and going forward. All right, so let's just drag this and put it like that, just like that. Okay, great. So just like that, our speed now looks better by being a bit slower. And now we can also switch this from mode, put it on a slider and drag it from zero to two. This way we can easily modify this field in order to make our shield faster or slower. So let's test this out. And here we are, and yep, there you go, our shield is now nicely animated going up. And here on the inspector, we can see our shield speed, and we can simply drag it to make it go much slower. There you go, very slow, or very fast. So there you go, our effect is nicely customizable. So we have successfully animated our shield. Awesome. Now here we have some basic emission. We want to be able to tint it in different colors and play around with the intensity. So back in our shader graph, let's make a new property of type color. And let's call this the emission color. Let's switch the mode from default into HDR. And here let's pick a nice blue. Okay, so all we need is to take our color in here. And then we make a multiply node. And we multiply this color by our emission texture. And we pass the output onto the emission on the master. So just like that. All right, let's see it in game. And yep, there it is in game, our shield with a very nice intense glow effect. And here in the inspector, we can play around with the color. So for example, now we have a blue, now make it a darker blue, make it lighter, make it a lot more intense, way too intense. And we can switch it to color. So let's make it a more red, more green and so on and so forth. So there you go, another nice customization option. Okay, so our effect is coming along great. We already have our shield looking very nice. Now let's use the gradient texture to add an extra effect on top. So back in our shader graph, first we need the texture. So we create a new texture 2D for our gradient. Okay, so let's drag the texture in here. And as always, we first sample it. So sample this texture. Yep, there's our gradient. And now we're going to take this color and add a multiply node. And we're going to multiply our gradient by the output of our emission. So there it is, you can see the effect. And now we can add this one on top of our emission in order to get a bit extra. So here with a add node, you can already see the effect. And then we pass all of this into the emission on the master. And okay, there it is. Now here we can add a color on top of our gradient like we did for the emission. 
So let's make a new color. Here, let's put it at almost white. And drag it in there, okay. And all we do is add a multiply node. So multiply our extra color by that one, and then we pass that one in there. And there you go, now we have a more intense effect. Okay, so let's see this in game. And yep, there it is, there's a shield with a gradient effect on top. Now it's currently being applied to the entire texture, so it's a bit hard to see. So let's deal with the tiling as well as animate it. Now in order to do that, we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did in here. So we need a tiling and offset node. And first to animate it, we pass in the same vector that we used in there. So we pass it on the offset. And there you go, you can already see the gradient constantly going up. Now like this gradient is going at the exact same speed as our main texture. We want to make it a bit faster. So we can simply make a vector one. And first we multiply these. And like this, we have it going a bit faster, so that's good. Now we also want to tile it more than just once. So for that, let's make a property of type vector one, call it the gradient tile Y. Let's default it to four. And now we just have to apply it into our tiling. So we drag it in here. We create a new combine node and we want to tile it on the Y. So we pass in the G and pass in the RG in there. And just like that, yep, you can see our nice gradient being tiled several times on the Y. All right, so let's see how our effect is looking right now. And yep, here we are with our nice shield effect. As you can see, we have the nice gradient going a bit faster than the actual shield hexagons. And the whole effect looks pretty great. Here in the inspector, we have all the values that we can play around with. So we can make it move faster or slower. And we can make the gradient tile more or less. So just like that, we get a bunch more rings on our gradient. And we also can play around with the color. So for the X-ray emission, for example, let's try putting it more of a green, more of a red, yellow, and so on. All right, so here we have a great force field shield effect. And we can also go inside and yep, everything looks pretty nice. All right, now let's finally take this and make it into a sprite shader. Okay, so making it a sprite is very simple. Let's simply duplicate our graph, call it our shield sprite. And now here is our complete nice shader graph. And all we need to do is modify our master node. So we can go into master and instead select the sprite lit. So here are both of our master nodes. Now we right click on this one, call set active. And now we can get rid of the master node. Now here, one of the main differences is that the sprite master does not have an emission, but rather the emission is baked into the color. So we just had a multiply node in order to multiply our emission by our base color and we pass that into the color and let's right click and make this into a quad. So here on the quad, you can already see the exact same effect. However, when working with sprites, it makes more sense to have a sprite shape rather than a mesh shape. So let's go into our main text, which is our hexagon texture. And we're going to rename this from main text into shield text. And now that we have renamed that, now we can add a new texture. And this one we're going to call the main text. And now for default, let's select a circle Okay, so now we drag our texture in here, we sample it. And now we just need to multiply this by our output from there. So we multiply our circle by our output in the colors in here. And we drag them out into the color. And there you go, now we have our nice sprite shape. Now one more thing we can do which is nice is applying a nice alpha. So just add a new vector one, call it the alpha. We just multiply the alpha by our texture and then we apply it in there and everything is the same. All right, so that's it, let's test. Okay, so here we are in a 2D scene. Now we simply create a new sprite render and now we need a material to apply to it. So we create our material and we select our shader graphs and our shield sprite. And there it is, our inspector property. So now we just drag it into our sprite. And there it is, there's our sprite nicely applicated. So here the shield effect essentially works on top of this sprite. So we can change this sprite. For example, let's use this one. And there you go, there's our nice shield effect. So you can play it in game. 
And up here we are in game with our working shield effect working as a sprite. So here in the inspector I can change the sprite. And yep, there it is. Now I can change the alpha, so make it more transparent, more visible. That's really visible. And again, we can still play around all the colors, like the emission, and play around all of this, and it's a great looking effect. So apply it to different textures, and there you go, it looks great. So just like this, we built our great effect. We made it work both in 2D and 3D. You can see this effect in action in the FPS game I made using Unity's micro game as a base. Go check out that video and play the game for yourself. It's very quick and fully playable in the browser. In there, you'll see the shield effect being used along with a nice shield system. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.